every entrepreneur has a story. Welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur, where each episode, your host, Brian Carney, will share a drink with a successful business owner and have them discuss their unique journey, gaining insight on what it takes to be an entrepreneur and the different ways to get there. Brian isn't just a beer nerd, he's also the co-founder of Rivers Edge Advisors, a financial planning firm headquartered in Delaware, specializing in working with business owners. It's time to pour yourself a drink and enjoy a happy half hour with an entrepreneur. Hey everyone, welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur. I am your host, Brian Carney. My guest today is the lovely Betsy Sakani, the owner of a voiceover company called Betsy Speaks. To say Betsy's energetic might be the greatest understatement of all time. So I'm really excited to have her on. Betsy, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Brian. I'm excited to be here. Perfect. Well, so for our conversation today, I'm going to be drinking a Victory Brewing Company Cloud Walker. Uh, if you listen to the show, you know I like hazy IPAs. So this is a 6.8. We should be able to be fine getting through. So what are you, what are you going to be drinking? I am going to be drinking a tequila. Well, you need to know actually what's in the shaker. I've got one freshly squeezed grapefruit, one orange, two limes, and uh, what did I use? I use Casamigas tequila, ah. and then I'm just a little bit of LaCroix on it with a jalapeno, but here's the piece de resistance. It's on the Betsy and Chip Martini glass, Brian. Oh, I'm I, sure you still have yours. I love it. Yes, absolutely. Cheers listener, to you. Listener, what you don't know is I gave these away at my wedding for a gift. So, Which I was in attendance for, one of the greatest mm -hmm. weddings of all time. Oh my God, it was fun. Yeah, we'll talk about, we'll talk about some of your performance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from that that's letter. delicious it, well that, that sounded like a science experiment so it sounded great it is very good good well let's talk about betsy speaks so tell us a little bit about your company well betsy speaks is a one woman show i'm the boss the the editor uh the marketing head of sales um i provide custom readings for my clients but those readings vary from specific my specific roles i should say very de depending on what the project is right um i i have supplied voices for commercials political commercials radio ads telephone prompts um pretty much anything i um i'm a client-based company not a voice-based company so i just feel like to sell something to somebody i have to connect with them and yeah and understand them. So um, I guess I look at my business as a collection of great customers who hopefully will come back and buy from me again and again, because that's the goal, the repeat yes. customer. So basically you're doing like commercials and you know that's that sort of thing for, is yeah. it mostly radio or TV or both? Uh, I've done both. Um, locally, I've done better than I have. I'm still kind of new at it. Uh, so I've done a lot of like local ads for parades or um, carnivals and I've done some Honey Bunches of Oats commercials and things yeah. like that. It's more um, for the whole United States, but still. Yeah. So I have to ask you, so you said political political ones. Did you have to do the, uh, this this ad is paid for or approved by, did you have yep. to read that too? Of course. Yep. I wish I had a way to play them for you because my political one was my favorite. It was the uh, against anti-smear ads. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what? Actually, I listened to that on your website. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I put it right up there. I, that's, I, that, I might be like most proud of that one. That's yeah. a great time of year to be a voiceover actor. I bet. 11 years. Yeah. So how do you even find people that A, need you and B, decide that your voice is the one that's right for them? Marketing, marketing, yeah. marketing, marketing. I mean, I am so obnoxious. I tell anybody I'd meet in, like, like the grocery store, uh, Betsy Speaks. Yeah. I, here for your voiceover needs. You just have to get the word out there. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's all marketing. Yeah. So did you, how did you even get into this? I know you have a, a background in, you know, theater and, and singing and that sort of thing, but how does that transition to, to owning well, a business in this? It's kind of funny. I, I hate to say it, but it's, it started off sort of like nepotism. Mm -hmm. My, um, my dad retired uh, earlier on in life and decided he can't play golf every day and he's got to do something. So he started a whole nother career and he's a creative kind of guy. And so he, he went into the voiceover industry really? and uh, he's now like 20 plus years into it, but um, he was always doing voiceovers and at about, when was it? 2007 or eight, or maybe right around there, I was visiting my parents up in Northern Michigan and my dad was doing a project with a gal and she needed um, another actor for her 
book on tape that she was doing. I don't know if somebody had dropped out or however it worked. And my dad's like, okay, gave me the script. And I just did a bunch of readings and long story short, <laughs> I ended up in the book on tape. Amazing. So actually, you know, it's funny. I unearthed this relic spirit of the badge listener. What you can't see is I'm holding up a six CD book on tape. <laughs> Spirit of the Badge, 60 True Police Stories of Divine Guidance, Miracles, and Intuition. And I'm on four of them. That's incredible. With your dad? With my dad. So first of all, let's talk about that. Because, you know, retiring early and then getting a starting another business of voiceover, that seems like an incredible job to have as a retired person. I know. And to be doing it 20 years later. Yeah, that that's... Not- and he got the, he's got the dream. He did, he got the consistent client. And it's so funny. I mean, it's, it can be anything. If you listen to, as you watch TV, voiceovers are everywhere. Yeah. Um, his main client that has been the most financially beneficial to him is a psychic out of Barcelona. And my dad does the translations. That's incredible. That's yeah. How does it, that, that's amazing. Like, who would even thought that, that you could make a living from a psychic from Spain? I mean, I mean, he's had a million other jobs, but yeah. he lives in Florida in the winter. And like, anytime you watch Jeopardy, the commercials, you can hear my dad's voice because he's an older man. And he's like the care plus and <laughs> the health ads in Florida. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, so we talked a little bit, you know, at your wedding, you got up on stage and sang a song. Re- remind, remind me what song you sang. Well, a really appropriate song to dedicate to my husband on our wedding day. I will survive. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very appropriate. Very appropriate. So, so it hasn't but, changed. I, yeah, of so course. That's like the only time I pretty much get up on stage anymore is at weddings. Yeah. Well, so you you have this background in dance, theater, and singing. Uh, you uh, to get up in front of a giant audience to to perform, like to give a speech, people is one of the greatest fears. Like people actually are more afraid to give a speech in front of a lot of people than they are to die. So. So I can't imagine like dancing and singing. So how much do you love being on stage? I absolutely love it. It's funny you say that. I was having this conversation with my son. He had a, a presentation to give and he's like, I just, you know, I don't love standing up there. And I was like, that is so funny. I hated sitting down and taking a written test. Anytime right. I could stand up in front of the class and talk about a project or something, I was a straight A. But yeah. it just was, it's, I love it. I, I, I love it. And this... I, this job is so much fun too. It's like, this is how I get my creative outlet. It's really fun being down in my studio and just playing around. Yeah, sure. So how do you, I mean, obviously, you know, you have the background in acting, but to become a a voiceover person, I guess, I imagine to get better at it, you have to train. Like, how do you even do that? Like, how do you find a way to get better at this? Yes, there's, well, there's copious amounts of literature. And um, my specific story is I didn't do anything for like 10 more years after the spirit of the badge. It was always in the back of my head and everyone was trying to get me to do it, but I was having kids and I just didn't, didn't go there, but we'd read some literature on it. And I think it was 2019, I was working at a preschool, I was a preschool teacher at a church right around the corner uh-huh. and um, probably getting a little bored. And yeah. I started to listen to webinars. You can find, you can find anything on the internet. Sure. So I started listening to webinars and then I honed in on the my father's mentor, a woman, um, named Susan Berkeley. She's made millions of dollars. She's the uh, main voiceover prompt of, is it, what is, what's in your wallet? Citibank? Is that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Or she's the voiceover prompt for that. Wow. And and a a million other things too. And years ago, you'd love this. She was the weather woman years ago on Howard Stern. I don't know if you remember her. Oh, he was like brutal to her. Um, (laughs) Anyhow, I started to listen to her webinars a lot. And then, you know, she's selling herself and she sold me on a voiceover boot camp in New Jersey, which I went to, but get the date. I went there March 7th, I believe in 2020. So as I'm there, the very first case of COVID of a 40 year old being hospitalized breaks out in Fort Lee, New Jersey, where I'm staying. (laughs) I'm like, oh, you're in the belly of the beast. So I just was like, you know what? I paid to be here. I'm just going to focus on this for three days. It was literally voiceover bootcamp. It's just everything from Mike to the money. I mean, we got in one day was all editing, which was like over my head, but I had to learn how to do it. It was, it was great. And then um, I came back like fists in the air, ready to take over the voiceover world and COVID hit and everything shut down. We moved to Harbor Springs, Michigan for two weeks and it turned into three months. And one thing led to another. And I kind of didn't do anything for a while. 
And then um, I just dusted off the mic and again, researched a local trainer and uh, worked with her. And that was a great move because she had like connections with local studios. Yeah. And I found a guy who helped me record my demo and a musician. And um, I then, as soon as you have all the information, you just send it out to everybody you know. It's all, who do you know? And what, yeah. how, how can you help me? How can I well, help you? So the, the, the difficult part, obviously, is be, of being a one woman band is like you said, you literally wear every hat. Yeah. And the editing thing. So, you know, even when I started looking at doing a podcast, I, th- th- that's the thing that really slowed me down the most was like, okay, try to learn how to edit these things. It's really difficult. And I just don't have the attention span for it. So, you know, we, we ended up hiring an editor for it, but how do you figure out how to do every aspect of it? I mean, you really have to go find the client, then you have to do that. Then you have to do everything and get it out there. Like, how do you actually even do that? Well, again, it's, it starts with the marketing. So I, you know, I send my information out everywhere locally, every casting agency. I do have an agent, Oh, but I regret that a little bit in that I am the, the agent gives me the local jobs that I already am in touch with. Right. So, so do you have to give them money to give you something that you already landed? Yeah. 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 So we'll don't worry. Your agent won't listen to this. So don't even worry about it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not, I'm not I don't we don't even talk that much. We're not um, big in Michigan yet. So soon. Well, you will be after this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyhow, I, I have, oh, and then I also pay for like online casting agencies too. For example, there's Mandy Voice, there's uh-huh. Voice 123, Cast Voices, um, things like that. So I, I pay, but then I also get the auditions that way. But as soon as I actually get the audition, um, I, because I've kind of come from an acting background, I approach it like an actor. So I break down the script. Yeah. I read it out loud a few times. My kids like, are like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you read it to yourself, you're just reading to yourself. I need to yeah. like, just be out loud. So at least I'm reading to somebody else. And then, um, and then I, I break it down for, you know, the meaning, what exactly am I selling? Um, I come up with a relationship. Who am I talking to? And yep. I, you know, I, I could be making, I'm making it all up in my head, but it's just to get me in the character. Yeah. Um, this is your process. With, this is my process. Yeah. Then I come up with a place. Where am I? And I always do a familiar place. Cause I don't want to waste my time, like creating a place. Yeah. And then my favorite thing to do is come up with a backstory. Cause something always happens before the story. Yeah. So like, right. I've got a Wendy's commercial right here. So I would probably be like, I'm sitting in my living room with my best friend and she's really hungry. So right. I would, or I start, actually I would record this and then just edit it out. I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're starving. Well, then head to Wendy's today and try one of our, our four totally reinvented salads. So then you just cut that part out. And it's a good segue. That's great. And then you do the editing and you send it off to the powers that be and hope it's not a no. Right. That's all. That's great though. So multiple people. So Wendy's goes, I'm looking for a voiceover to say this. And however, however many people apply or audition to be that person. And then they select it based off of that. And some of the places, so, so like, for example, Mandy voice gives me a cutoff date. So it could be, it depends. It could be, you know, we need this by the end of the day or we right. need this in a month, but there's another one cast voices that just gives you a number of people. So there's yep. probably, I don't even know thousands of people that are members, but they put out an email and it's like, we're filling 30 slots. We're not going to listen to more than 30 people. So if I'm at a lacrosse game or something of Dempsey's and yeah. I can't run back, but right. I mean, it's, it, that's the, that's what it is. And I could be on vacation and run up and, you know, cause I just travel with my mic and my headphones and sure. my computer. I could go in a closet with pillows and record it then. Yeah. But um, the timing ones are hard for me sometimes to get just cause I'm out, but. Well, uh, you know, the positive thing is like you said, you can literally do it from anywhere if you have a, a microphone. Yeah. And I've got a great little microphone. I've got, it's downstairs in my studio, but it's a, it converts everything itself. It's an Apogee mic. It's fabulous. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Um, so given that this is sort of a show business industry, I mean, you're an actor, you, everyone doing voiceover for the most part is an actor, right? Yeah. Um, I'd imagine you get hit, you get hit with no a lot. You have no idea. <laughs> so much no. And I, you know, everybody preps you for the no. Like my yeah. father, I think he took him like a year before he got his first job. And yeah. And everyone tells you this, like you're gonna just, it's gonna be everywhere, but it is shocking. Cause even though you hear that, you're like, oh, God, I nailed this. Every time you send something in, every you know, I think I got at least 200 no's before I got a yes. Wow. I mean, it's oh, it's and it still is. I mean, for every 25 at least. I mean, it's it's a big no industry because. Again, think of how many audition. I mean, you're a 
there's a perfect job out there for me, but then there's also the uh, jobs that just don't work for my voice. And sure. the, the, the client's looking for something specific. So yeah. I, uh, I just, that's why I, I say I'm not like marketing, marketing, marketing. I'm not afraid to be in their face anymore right. and keep on because I might be horrible for one job, but I might be perfect for another. Yeah. It is kind of a weird thing where they're rejecting you based off of how you sound. Yeah. I know. They never even see what you look like. So I guess that's, that, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing where you're, you're setting a tape of your voice and they're like, oh, no, that's not well, it. I've got the face for radio. Is what I <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it is. It is crazy. It, it yeah. is, but um, I, I was in a studio doing a job up in East Lansing and they, they kind of were telling me some of the people, some of the auditions that they had heard and some of them, and I'm sure I've done it too. Because sure. you, you, you get it wrong from the description you write of what they want. But they were saying how the people just were overdoing this and underdoing that. And it is it is easier once you get the job, obviously, and you're in the studio, whether you're in the studio or your own studio, you're talking to the director. Yeah. So it, I, I handle direction really well. That right. it's easier for me for like, do, you know, dip your voice down or have a kinetic energy to your voice here, you know, yeah. which is like spastic as opposed to the, um, what is the other one? Psychological, which is like ooh, energy, uh, kinetic, but taken down. Yeah, yeah. I don't, so, I don't see you taking energy down anywhere. Well, this is the problem, and you know, another <laughs> problem is, is I'm so loud. The microphone picks up everything. I have a studio in my basement, and I, my kids call me the temperamental artiste because I'm like, I can hear the dog walking. I can hear <laughs> the drip from the faucet down. here. be quiet because the microphone just picks up everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's hilarious. So I was actually, I, I think I was mis going into this conversation. I think I had the, the I was misinformed and, you know, I had a, a, the wrong opinion that there are only a small amount of these jobs making it uber competitive. There's just tons of them well, and, and there's tons of people doing it. Is that yeah. kind of the way? It's uber competitive because I mean, there's so many people that are doing this along with their full-time jobs. And there's people that do this full, I mean, it's it, the, the beauty of it is you can do it out of your house. Yeah. So it, it, uh, they're, they're, they're out there. I've, I've started going into chat rooms on Facebook, which I'd never done before. And I, I have met so many people right now. I'm working with this one guy who's just got me reading fictional stuff for him. I, I, who knows what he's doing with it. Maybe he's, I don't know. That's the one thing you do also have to be careful. Some of the people like try not to pay you. Yeah, of course. You know, there's all that, but um, it, it's amazing what's what's out there. You just have to put yourself out there. Yeah. Is there sort of like the rock star version of the voiceover person, like the best voice? Is, is it, it your James dad? Earl Jones? Yeah. Who is that? Who is it? James Earl Jones. Uh, right. Or like Morgan right. Freeman, you know, it's, you would think. Totally. Yeah. Or um, have you seen, there's a funny movie from a long time ago. What is it called? Oh, uh, In a World. And it's, it's all about voiceovers. It's really funny. And I can't remember his name, but there's somebody in that that's really good. Oh, the, um, like the old country guy with the mustache, who's like the voiceover. Of oh the, yeah. Uh, the Quaker Oats guy. Yeah. Uh, the, the big Lebowski. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, it is, it's funny you bring this up because a lot of times you'll be listening, you'll hear a commercial and you go, I know that voice. Yeah. I have to figure out who that is. And then it, you'll, you'll hear the commercial like three or four times. And then I have to go, you know, I have to go to, to, to look it up on the internet. I'm like, I knew that was at him. You know, who's spectacular is um, the president from that movie. Was it 24? Oh yeah. He's amazing. With his yeah. Voiceover. Yeah. That's it. See, that's interesting because you know, yeah. it, it, that if you could get locked in uh, seriously, like your dad has found that, he's the voice of that company. If you could get locked in as the voice of that company. I mean, you think about Gilbert Godfrey, he, how much money he was making just to be the Aflac duck. And he made yeah. one cr run terrible joke about, I think it was the uh, tsunami that happened in Japan. And he, he was making like $10 million a year or something from that. I mean, that's a unique voice too, right? Right. That does a show. It's not about the voice because I would, if, if I focus on his voice, I would think he's annoying. Yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. No? right. So, um, oh, Will Arnett is one of my favorite voices too. He's, and he's everywhere. Yeah, he, he is for sure. Yeah. Um, so how difficult, I mean, obviously being able to do it anywhere, but how difficult do you find it to be able to work and still juggle all the home responsibilities that you have? Like you mentioned earlier, Hey, I could get something come in that my voice is perfect for, but I'm at a lacrosse game. So I'm sort of SOL on that. So how, how do you, yeah. how do you manage to juggle all that? 
Well, it's um, Chip's beginning to travel, which is making it a little bit easier because yeah. for two years he's been home and after having him traveling all the time he and and as you might know but listener he's like the caveman lawyer like what is this little box i need to scream into it as loud as possible and he paces so that was the real challenge so now at least when he's gone and i have the house to myself it's so much easier yeah but um it's just working with the noise and um that's the beauty of my job i actually don't find that part to be a challenge i I do what I can do. And if I, if I have to miss an audition, I miss that one. And I, I try for the next. Yeah. So it doesn't bum you out if you're like, Oh, that would be perfect, but uh, whatever. I'll get the next one. Well, it bums me out if it's like legitimately a perfect job. There was one yeah. job that was, um, this is so funny. And I was like, I could have nailed this. It was a piece of pizza haunting a woman who's trying to lose weight. <laughs> I'm like, I live with that piece of pizza. I yeah. could totally do this job, <laughs> but I was out somewhere. And again, that was the one that filled up really fast. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. I could have nailed that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, you know, given your husband's absolute love for pizza. All we do perfect. is eat pizza. And half the time I'm like, I'm trying not to eat that. Right, so. exactly. Um, Go-to karaoke song besides oh. the I Will Survive. It sounds like, you know, you probably kick open the, the karaoke bar and you set it set it ablaze. So what will be your go-to? I have always oh, was seven. Johnny was a young man when he played his first Beatles song. <laughs> Love with you, I think it was. And from then, it didn't take too long. What is that? Is that um? Oh, uh, hold on. Every day, superstar. Don't okay. you know that? Is that bad company? I think that is bad company. Uh huh. Always. Yes. I've done. I've karaoke twice in my life. I can't sing for a thing. But the well, two even songs. Even Kip and he gets up there by the hour. It's embarrassing. <laughs> The the uh, the first song I ever did was "We Didn't Start the Fire." That that's a tough one. Yeah, and that's why I chose it because you don't really have to sing; you can kind of talk through. And if you know the words, people are like, "Holy crap!" Exactly. Yeah. And the other one, aggressive move. In the middle of Nashville, I did "Can I Get a What What" by Jay Z. Stop it right now! And I only know I it though. Yeah. Be, I told my buddies, we were there for an Eagles Titans game. And I told my friends, I was like, I'm going to go do this. They're like, there's no way you're going to do that. They call my name. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing it. And I don't know the word. There's three verses. I don't know the words to the second two. So I did a mic drop at the end of the Oh my gosh. I wish I was there. Yeah. Karaoke guys really love when you damage their equipment like that. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, So if you're going to talk to someone who's thinking about getting into this industry, Given that you've been doing it and you've made mistakes, what would be some of the advice that you would give to them? I would highly recommend that they do a lot of reading or take a class on marketing. Yep. First and foremost, just because that was the biggest challenge. And I would say, don't be afraid of being in people's faces. I mean, we're in a different age now. I, I, I Sending out like postcards and things do, doesn't happen as much just because it's all electronic, but it, it, it's all about marketing. It really is. You could be fabulous and nobody would know, you know? Yeah. That's interesting. So this is really a marketing business, you know? I think so. It, 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 and it helps to know people and it helps to, every time you meet somebody, ask what they do, who they know, how you could help them. Yeah. I'm um, donating to an auction of a school that my kids have never even attended just because I'm getting my, my, my name on a poster, you know? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess at some, to some point, the marketing part, you know, marketing yourself is, is extremely important because how much different can 30, if they can narrow it down to 30 choices for a particular job, you know, they probably will choose someone that they, they have a good relationship with and you've worked with in the past. So that is, yeah. that, it, that does make a lot of sense. Yes. What's it your, what's like your it. least favorite part about running your own business? Well, probably the marketing. Yeah. I've had I've had to figure out how to do it, but I still I mean it's nobody wants to like constantly bother people, right? I it, I, I I that and the editing is not my favorite because I don't I'm not great with computers. Mm -hmm. But um, now I don't I have to edit my auditions, but it's a lot of jobs more often than not just want me to send in my stuff as is, and then yeah. they have an editor that does that. That's perfect for me. Yeah, that that. That makes sense to me, you know. Yeah, um, in and the fade out, and you have to hide your breath, and you yeah. know, every like I said, the mic picks up everything. If I like, if I had a dry mouth, it, it's it literally picks up everything. So yeah, for sure. Um, would you do anything differently 
for your personal journey? Like, would you have gotten into this sooner after that six part series where you're in four of them, spirit of the badge. Don't forget. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, would, you, would, you can find it. If you can find a CD player, you can buy it. <laughs> um, I would be aggressive, be, be aggressive. I would have been like so much more aggressive right mm -hmm. off the bat. I, I don't know if I was shy or insecure or just not focused. I probably a combination of everything. Yes. So I, I just would have been like, there's nothing stopping you. What, what, because what is if you, right? You know? I mean, you, you already said that dealing with the no isn't the worst thing. It sucks, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So I guess being I mean, a little more it's aggressive. Gotten, it's gotten to where it's like water off a duck's back. I, right. It it's like, okay. I, I almost, every time I get an um, a email and not even half of them will email and explain why they didn't pick me or just say you didn't get picked. And then the other half just, you never hear from them. Yeah. What, so, what, what are some of the reasons they give you why you didn't get picked? They don't like to give you negatives, but they, it's, it's always like, I'm just going in a different direction. We thought yeah. you were really good, but we've decided to go with this direction because, you know, they yeah. don't ever say you're, you're loud with a Michigan accent. <laughs> that never comes up. Not yet, that's, at least. That's shocking. Yeah. yeah. All right. You ready for- Tell me about it. Yeah. All right. So you ready for lightning round? Ooh. Okay. We've never done lightning round before, but I'm really excited about this. Ooh, this is going to be a possible new addition. It could be. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're drinking tequila with a, that, that drink took you a long time to prepare. So we want to make sure that you, you finish it off before we're done here. So well, tequila makes me very smart too. So I might be really good at this. We'll of see. course. All right. You ready? Yes. Favorite show tune of all time. Oh my gosh. That's like asking me what finger I like the most. <laughs> um, it changes every day too. One day more, cabaret. One day more. One day more. Okay, we we'll got that down. What's your favorite musical of all time? Well, that's asking me like what hand I like the most, but um, Rent. Okay, got to go. Got to be Rent. Well, let's talk about Rent for a minute. So, love to. Uh, my senior year in high school, the year that Rent opened, yes. our school took us to see Rent, and they tried to prepare us, but I don't think any of us had any idea what was going on now obviously this is a long time ago things are a lot different now 96 and 97 listener yeah that's right that's right it was 1990 1996 the fall of 96 i graduated in 97 uh it's too aggressive to take a bunch of high school seniors to to that show you know i i don't think so the very first musical i ever saw was les mis and i was like six or five and my mom my mom's friends were horrified that she was taking me and i was on the edge of my seat like this the whole time um, no, I mean, it is kind of aggressive. I think it's really cool. Yeah. I also will never live it down because my husband and you saw the original Broadway cast of Rent. It's so true. So I thought I was good. Like I, my mom and I went when it had been open for maybe like three months. Tay yep. Diggs, maybe four. Tay Diggs had already left. Right. So I saw everybody but, but Tay him. Diggs because yeah. he wanted to do when Stella got her groove back. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so I missed him and Chip, it's his claim to fame. Chip saw everybody in the OBC. <laughs> so I'll never let it down. Speaking of which, the, along with this lightning round, worst musical to go to a movie for TV. I would actually say Rent myself. Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I hate to offend my Adam Pascal, but I kind of agree. Yeah. I, and I, I didn't, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I was disappointed, but the best part about that was the documentary at the end on the CDs. Yeah. So I'll say Rosario Dawson ruined that for me. That's just my, my gosh, uh, 100%. And so I, I, on my Peloton, anytime I do the Broadway rides, yeah. I get so furious. They don't play Daphne Rubin Vega. They play Rosario Dawson. Yeah. It's no good. It's no good. And I'm I not know, a, I, listen, it's nothing against her. I just watched dope sick. I thought she was great in it, but like, yeah. I, I just, she, it, it, no, it just didn't work. Okay. All right. Most overrated musical of all time. Oh, gosh. Oh, Victor Vixuckia. No offense to Julie Andrews. She's my favorite. And she was fabulous in it. But I saw on Broadway Raquel Welsh. And I coined it Victor Vixuckia. It was awful. <laughs> it was like a waste of my time. Okay. Remember the uh, Seinfeld where she didn't move? Was she the one like she, she didn't move her arms? Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. That's, that's kind right. of how she was on stage. All right. So most underrated Broadway show of all time or Ooh, musical. Most underrated Broadway show. That's a good one. I'm going to go with Spring Awakening comes to mind. Okay. I thought it was fabulous and it didn't, it didn't last that long. Okay. Great. Although very controversial. Yeah. 
I loved it though. Um, your husband and your son are both outstanding at golf. So Chip, for for comparison for everyone that doesn't that uh, that's listening, Chip is a point one handicap, um, and he's outstanding. He's basically a scratch golfer. All right, Tom, your son Thomas, Tommy is an outstanding golfer as well. I believe he's a four. I think so. I think that's right. Are you good at golf? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, and no. I have such a rotator. I'm two months on a fall and a party bus. I slipped. Uh, it wasn't like a bad thing. It was a dr- something. Chip spilled a drink. <laughs> I still can't. I took my sling off for the for the recording. I still can't move my arm. I, I don't think I can. Well, maybe I can play this summer. But no, I'm not any good. All my clubs go the same length. How about your daughter? She's getting into it finally. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Chip took her to the simulator the other day, and they I, I put a putting green in our backyard, and they've been out there practicing. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. So now I feel like I have to, and I, I said I'll play with you, and she was like, I'd rather play with Dad. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, all right. Two more questions in lightning round. Sophie's choice. <clears throat> Would you rather have a leading role next to Hugh Jackman or Zac Efron? <sighs> um. Okay. I love Hugh Jackman, but I'm picking Zac Efron and here's why. Mm -hmm. The last scene in The Greatest Showman when they're dancing in those tuxedos. Yep. Hugh Jackman's legs don't quit. And I love that. But if you look at Zac Efron's thighs in those pants. Oh, (laughs) Zac Efron. (laughs) He obviously. A while in my life where I literally answered favorite movie as High School Musical 1. (laughs) And I was like in my 30s. Yeah. And uh, our daughters probably love that as well. And they're oh 14. And, and my son, he went as Troy Bolton for Halloween and knows all. He's a secretly, uh, a secret actor. Oh, really? Oh, he's great. He's got a great voice. He just, he's, he's all sports. Yeah. So d- is he into getting on stage or is he a little he's too? He's great when he's on stage, like for assemblies. And yeah. he's, he's got a great voice and he sings and dances at parties. I'm sure he's a blast, but uh, he doesn't really do anything else with that. Okay. All right. Here's the last question as we wrap up here. Okay. One of these artists must be wiped out off the planet and have never existed before. Ooh. Billy Joel, <laughs> Billy Joel, Elton John, or Maroon 5? Oh, no! <laughs> Betsy is an enormous Maroon 5 fan, and she also loves Billy Joel and Elton John, so I you have to pick one to have never existed before. Okay, I can't believe I'm going to say this. You're killing me. I have so many Maroon 5 fans that follow me if I post a promo video for this. Um, I'm saying Maroon 5 because Billy Joel and Elton John? Yeah. And, and let me say, Adam Levine is too tattooed. And they took the turn with their music when they started like mixing all those beats. Like, give me a Sunday morning all day long. It's funny you say that because I listened to, we brought up Howard Stern earlier. Uh, they were on Howard Stern and he sort of said he had, doesn't have enough time with all the shows that he does now to yeah. actually write his own music so other people write it. And I agree Howard with you. Uh, their, their, uh, the quality of their music has uh, suffered greatly. I don't even think they like their music. I but think you're Howard, right. Howard loves Adam Levine. He Did does. you see Adam Levine playing Purple Rain? At, uh, at his birthday party? It was he like channeled Prince. I mean, the guy's uber talented. That's why I'm like, why, why? He is I, that, that I, for anybody that hasn't seen that, go to YouTube and look it up because he he absolutely shreds it on the guitar. Oh, I I spend so much time on YouTube looking up his covers. Yeah, like, he, his covers are really good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Betsy, this was awesome. So if um you know if anyone wants to learn a little bit more about you, where can they go? Well, uh, www.betsyspeaks.com and all my contact info is on there. And uh, give me a call. I'd be happy to chat. I'm here for your voiceover needs. I love it. I feel like um, when you say www, that means that you're 42-ish. 100%. Yeah. (laughs) 100%. I was just watching that Pam and Tommy movie. Yeah. And it cracks me up. I'm like, wait, I still feel that that way about like the world wide web. Right. The internet. (laughs) Have you seen uh, Yellow Jackets? No. So Yellow Jackets is a show uh, on Showtime, and it's about a soccer team from 1996 that's going to states, and they their plane crashes. And they're flashing back and forth between now, going to their reunion and stuff now. So it's basically us. It, it's like oh our lives. So I might get into that tonight. Chip's out of town. Yeah, there you go. All right. So 
BetsySpeaks.com. Yep. Give me a rating out of one out of five on the drink that you made. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I think I'm a mixologist. I'm going five. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to give Cloud Walker by Victory Brewing Company right up the street here at, uh, fr- from where we are right now. I'm going to give this a three and a half out of five. Definitely would drink it again. I don't give many beers five, so that's a good rating by me. Wait, I know. Now I feel like I gave, well, it's still a five. Yeah, of course. It looked like a five. Yeah. So when we put it on YouTube, everyone will see that. All right. If you want to connect with me on, on the Untapped app, my username is brcarney 7 To learn more about how our firm helps business owners with their financial planning, visit riversedgeadvisors.com. And finally, to hear past episodes of the podcast, go to happy-half-hour.com. Betsy, thank you so much. Cheers to you. Thank you. Good to see you. This has been so much fun. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur, sponsored by Rivers Edge Advisors. For more information on how Rivers Edge Advisors can help you, visit their website at riversedgeadvisors.com. If you'd like to connect with Brian Carney for business advice or just to share a beer, follow him on Instagram at riversedgeadvisors underscore LLC.